Hi, Rage Nation. Kimber Schaefer here, and we are about to kick 2024 off with a bang, Rage Nation style. We have a two-night event back in Oklahoma City at the Oklahoma City Farmers Public Market, which is very historic to Rage in the Cage. We have been there so many times over the past couple dozen years, and we are back for a two-night event um, in February. We are doing the Struggle Snuggle, which is Roll in the Cage mm -hmm. 10, followed by Rage in the Cage 97, which is our Valentine's Day bash. So, you know, a little birdie tells me that you are a definite Rage in the Cage, not only fighter, oh, yeah. but you're a fan and you really enjoy definitely. fighting on our cards. So Definitely. From I've had a few of my teammates fight. What actually got me into wanting to fight for Rage is Ken Coulter. Uh -huh. He was fighting and he was telling me more about it and I was like, I want to come try it. Let's try it. And eventually I talked to Summer and she got me on the card, so I'm just thankful for you guys. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad you've had a good experience with us because... It, it means a lot to us. And, and, you know, Mike's legacy, our longtime owner yeah. and creator of Rage in the Cage, um, to, like, make sure that his legacy is remembered in that way, mm -hmm. of always being a positive experience, as much as we can help it. Yeah, exactly. There's some things that are out of our control. So <laughs> when it comes to, you know, we have to follow rules by the Athletic Commission and yeah, stuff. And sometimes that's hard. But um, we do the best we can. So we appreciate your love for Rage in the Cage and appreciate that you are coming back for... Yes. Um, another round, and you've had quite a bit of success in the cage so far. Yes, so, so far. walk me through your career. O although it's been short so far, walk me through um, um, how it's been for you in the cage. So I've been training for roughly seven months now under Coach Coleman. Um, I came to him first day. I told him I want to be a fighter. He told me just make it to next week, and then we'll talk about fighting. And then I've just been practicing since then. I took my first fight two months. Yeah, two months into me fighting. I won via decision, then fought the next month, won TKO, and then fought the next month, and now we, we're here. And you don't really even have a background in martial arts, No, correct? never wrestled, never done jiu-jitsu, never did any striking, just... But what made you want to step foot in the gym then? Were you a street fighter? Or? My dad was an MMA fighter. He's a professional fighter. He did pretty good. Growing up, I lived in New York, so there was always fights every now and then, but nothing too crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, your dad being an MMA fighter, that explains you walking in the gym and wanting yeah. to be a fighter. That's where I was getting at. Yeah, he would always he would always tell me, hey, just go wrestle, try this, try this. But I used to always think it was super corny for some reason. And I never got to try it, so I'm happy I did. It's yeah. been a blessing. It's opened up things for me, for my family, and I'm just happy to be here. In what way has it been a blessing as far as opening things up for your um, family? Growing up, I, I was well in the foster care system, so a lot of things, I, I, I didn't know how to express myself in multiple ways. And being able to fight and talking to coach. And coach isn't just a coach. He's always been a mentor first. So it's been able to help me mentally and then physically as well. Wonderful. You know, and I, I every interview that I um, participate in for a Rage in the Cage or a Rolling Cage event, it just seems like that jiu-jitsu and martial arts has just really a healing property yeah. to it. It's just amazing when I hear these stories. And it doesn't matter the background. It you know, even somebody born with what we might consider a silver spoon in yeah. their mouth, they are. There's still ways where they've used jiu-jitsu to heal them mm -hmm. through traumas and life circumstances and stuff. So, and I know Coach Coleman um, has been wonderful yes. to you. Yeah, he pushes and, us all the time. Oh, good. So you've been there seven months now. Yeah, seven months. And you train the whole gamut: groundwork, yeah, yeah, yeah. stand up. I, I'll say train seven times a week, twice a day, sometimes three times a day, sometimes. Coach Coleman's always good on telling me, like, hey, this is what we need to work on. This is what you made a mistake with your previous fight, and then we go from there. So do you guys go back ever and watch your video from your previous fights? And, oh, yeah. and Okay. All the time. Coach always tells us, like, hey, like, don't do this again, or you need to do this more. And then, yeah, he's just always showing us something, teaching us, showing us how to deal with the crowd, deal with um, interviews and things like that. He even coaches you on interviews? Yeah, yeah, he always tells me, like, just be confident, enjoy yourself, and say how you feel. Oh, good. We had fun doing our interviews over there at yeah, AMA last awesome. event, so I appreciated him, and he's always there watching and yeah, yeah, supporting yeah. you guys. So, all right, so who are you fighting this time around? Um, I'm fighting Isaiah Jasso. From what I've heard, he's a wrestler. He trains at, um, I forget what it's called, but he trains up like a little bit further upstate, and he's a good, he's one in, he's one, in one, if I'm not mistaken. He's a good kid. I'm just trying to go out there and beat him. Of course. <laughs> You, you got to beat him, um, or, you know, that's just how you have to go into a fight, yeah. and then you can be friends afterwards. Yeah, yeah. We've talked previously, but right now it's it's wartime, so I'm ready to go. All right. Well, anything else about you that I haven't asked you want people to know? Um, I want to know I'm a hardworking person. 
I'm willing to lose a little blood to win. So. And, and you have a there. stack full of tickets. Yes, I actually have 50 tickets. So, guys, come check it out. It's going to be $35 for a general admission. You're going to see Kimber, you're going to see me, you're going to see a few other people, and it's going to be a fun time. Sounds good. I mean, I think as of right now, you've checked out more tickets than anybody. So yes, you might end yes. up being our top ticket seller yes, as an amateur, yes, which is huge as an amateur. Yeah, I've been trying to like focus because I know MMA could be a business side and you have to market yourself as if it was a brand. So I'm trying to really focus on marketing myself as well as presenting myself in a way that people want to come see me. Yeah, well, and that's so important. I know a lot of people in here, Stephanie can attest to this, and it really is important to be able to Who's going to come see you if you can't promote yourself? Exactly. So, um, and UFC certainly, they want the people yeah, that they, they want the put butts guys. in the seats. No, <laughs> so, um, talent gets you far too, mm -hmm. but you've got to have a good personality and be able to interview I on agree. camera. So, and I think you fit that bill. So, I'm so proud of you. Proud of the man that you're becoming. Thank you. Thank you. And so, and your sweet family you have, and yes, everybody that's there supporting you. So, you guys, speaking of support, you've got to come out Friday on February 9th for our Struggle Snuggle, the Roll in the Cage event at Oklahoma City Farmers Public Market, followed by this guy, one of the headliners, of course. Yes. You guys are all headliners. Yes, yes. For the Rage in the Cage card, it's Rage in the Cage 97, your Valentine's Day bash. You can get tickets on stubware.com or hit him up. He's got 50 in hand. 50. Yeah. I need and them all sold as well. Exactly. We need to fill the seats and we need to celebrate public enemy because I'm going to go out there and get a knockout. That's really the goal. Wonderful news. And, you know, we um, we sell out Farmer's Market um, quite often. So um, our January 25th card is already uh, sold out. Yeah, so if you're missing out on January 25th, make sure that you join us for one of these cards on February 9th and 10th. We'll see you then, and we're going to rage it up.